Enjoy early access to ad-free episodes each week when you subscribe to Wedding Planning Podcast Premium in Apple Podcasts. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, my friend, and thank you, as always, for joining me for a few minutes here this week to talk about all things wedding. And this week, specifically, we're going to cover a very lighthearted and fun topic, what could go wrong, talking about cake and desserts. So from everything to researching bakeries, booking cake tastings, unique dessert alternatives, and some very budget-friendly cost-saving tips, I've got answers to all of your questions in today's show. And let's jump right in and get started with cake tastings. So common question, do cake tastings cost money and what's a range or a dollar amount that we can expect to spend? Cake tastings are so fun. And if the bakery that you are considering using for your wedding cake, if they're doing it right, then they should be going all out to really, really impress you as you are going into a tasting, which is, of course, your first impression of their product and also their service. So you're typically going to be able to choose multiple flavors and combinations of filling, cake, and icing as you build the exact flavor profile that you want. And then also to keep in mind here with a tiered cake or any combination of a tear cake and sheet cakes, you're also going to be able to have more than one flavor to share with your guests. And we're going to go into that more in a bit later in the show. So obviously, there's a wide range of cake tasting prices that you can expect. And depending on your area and the services that are available in your area, Very generally speaking, I would prepare for anywhere from free up to about $50 or so. And again, of course, I'm generalizing this may be different in your market. And you may be thinking $50 for a piece of cake. That sounds like quite a lot of money. Uh, There's a lot more to it than that. And a good way to look at this is if you're going to be investing upwards of $1,000 on a cake, then putting down $50 to taste a big variety of sample flavors seems pretty reasonable. And not to mention the priceless experience of getting to actually work with that specific bakery so that you know exactly the service level that you can expect on your very special day. And if you are very budget conscious, then some good news for you here, like most things in wedding planning and of course in life in general, there are some hidden secret money saving tricks here that are involved with cake tasting. I have been to many, many bridal fairs or wedding fairs where bakeries are set up there with free samples. This would be a wonderful way to potentially do multiple cake tastings in one day from multiple bakeries, and you could potentially circumvent the tasting fee, not to mention saving yourselves the time of scheduling multiple different tasting events. So in my book, that's a win, win, win. So go out and see if there's a bridal show or a wedding fair in your area where you could take advantage of potentially doing the cake tastings for free. And then moving into our next wedding cake topic, what are some popular cake flavors and combinations? Now I'll say here that the best flavor for your wedding cake is the one or two or even three that you and your fiance enjoy the most. This is definitely an area of wedding planning where it's going to literally be impossible to please every single person at your event. So I would really, really highly recommend just keeping it simple and going with exactly what you like the most. In terms of popular flavors or popular combinations, seasonal flavors may or may not come into play for you. So for example, think of pumpkin, apple, spice, or carrot cake for a winter or a fall event. And then flavors like citrus, lemon lime, fruity, like mango or strawberries, raspberry with a light white cake comes to mind for a spring or a summer event. Now, do you have to follow traditional seasonal flavor guidelines? Absolutely not. 
But this can be a good starting point to kind of start to narrow down your options. TLC.com rounded up a group of expert bakers to share the most popular wedding cake flavor combinations for 2023. And I'm going to share a small sampling of their list. And then of course, I'll also leave a link to the full article in the show notes and also in the blog post for today's show that you can find at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cake. So here are a couple of flavor highlights from that article. If you're in the mood for a cake that mixes salty and sweet, Bess Charles, who's the co-owner of Lady Cakes in Cape Coral, Florida, says that their vanilla salted caramel pretzel cake has been extra popular this year because it's an unusual option that's also quite familiar to people's taste buds. Here we have a light and airy vanilla cake is smothered in homemade signature salted caramel pretzel buttercream, providing a sweet and salty flavor. That sounds so good. My husband is obsessed with pretzels, so he definitely would have put a vote in for that one. Uh, Another popular and very timeless flavor combination is raspberry and vanilla with buttercream. And then another popular cake flavor this year is hummingbird cake with cream cheese frosting. I had actually never heard of hummingbird cake, so I had to look into what exactly that means. And it's a banana pineapple spice cake. So this nomination for most popular flavor comes from Chef Johan Le Boscond who was actually the Summer Baking Championship finalist on Food Network, and their bakery is based in Ocala, Florida. And then the last one I'll share here is an Italian cream cake. So this one has rich flavors of pecan, coconut, and almond, and that's all paired with cream cheese frosting. And it's pictured in the article with beautiful lemons and lemon leaves as a decoration. And those are actually edible sugar. So pretty. So make sure to go take a look at that one. And this flavor combination was nominated by Sarah Jacobs from Cake Muse. And that's the bakery that specializes in those gorgeous sugar edible flowers and decorations. Again, I have a link to this full article from TLC.com in the show notes if you want to review all of the most popular flavor combinations of 2023. And then shifting away from flavor, let's talk about the best cake decorations or toppers. So if you take a trip to Pinterest and type in wedding cake into the search bar, you will literally be busy for days looking at endlessly creative and gorgeous wedding cakes and dessert options. So if you are wanting to get any inspiration to get you started, I always, always, always recommend Pinterest for a great visual way to kind of get inspired and get some ideas flowing. For the most simple and a very beautiful way to decorate your wedding cake, if you want to go beyond what the bakery is decorating it with, then I would recommend a tiered cake with a pretty cake topper. And I left a link to a bunch of wedding cake toppers on Etsy that are fully customizable. They are simple and they are super affordable, some of them starting at just $10. Now, I should not have been surprised that there are over 125,000 options of cake toppers to choose from, but I was indeed surprised, and yes, you heard that number right, 125,000 cake topper options. You are sure to find something you love, and again, those options are all linked up in the show notes or the blog post for today's episode. Another great option for decorating your cake is a very simple tiered cake that's decorated with fresh flowers. So you can use leftover clippings from your bouquets and or your centerpieces. And if you want to go that route, you'll just need to coordinate between your florist and your bakery to make sure that those flower clippings are delivered or passed along so that the cake can get decorated with them. If you are doing your own flower arrangements and or bouquets, 
then that makes it even easier. You can just have the cake delivered to you naked or without any decoration and then designate someone to arrange the flower blooms and or the leaves in the tiers on the day of your reception. Okay, and then the last idea here with decorations is to use edible sugar flowers. And I'll direct you once again to thousands of beautiful options from independent business owners on Etsy. And that link is in today's show notes. And then one last word to wrap this little section up, of course, a cake topper or flowers or any extra embellishments whatsoever are completely optional. And you could certainly just choose a beautiful cake design that's ready to go straight from the bakery and skip this step altogether. Next in our ultimate guide to wedding cakes and desserts, this is a good one. What hidden costs should we be aware of? as we're searching for a cake and or bakery for our desserts. Okay, I have a bunch here. So this would be a really good one to stop by the blog post for to get the written recap. So you don't need to jot all this down. I'm going to rattle off some things. So hidden costs, delivery fee, any service fees charged by your bakery, a gratuity or a tip for both the bakery staff and the delivery person, any additional decorating fees that are charged to add your cake topper, flowers, etc. There is typically a cutting and a serving fee from your venue and or your caterer. And then a preservation fee if you're looking to save the top layer of your cake to enjoy on your first anniversary. And we're going to go into that more in just a minute. And then the last kind of hidden or unexpected fee could be cake tastings, which we touched on first thing in today's show. So those are kind of the main things to be aware of and to factor into your cake budget. And then of course, any dessert bar extras that you're looking to add in on top of cake. To bring this to life with some actual numbers, and obviously I am estimating here, but just to give you an idea, if your actual cake costs $700, then you're going to need to factor in roughly $50 for delivery, $50 for tax, $50 for a tip, $50 for a decorating fee, and $100 for cutting and serving. So your $700 cake is actually going to cost about $1,000. And I'm sure you can see how depressingly fast that all adds up. To put this another way, if your total budget for desserts is $700, then I'd be looking for a cake that actually costs about $500 just to give yourselves room for all of those pesky little extra fees. This incredibly simple real life example of dollar amounts and numbers. This is exactly how most couples wind up going over budget on everything from their cake to their venue to their food and to desserts. Another good cake related question is what's the best way to save the top layer for us to enjoy on our first anniversary? All right, very simple here. You can go the route of entrusting your catering company or service to do this for you, or you can simply designate someone close to you to grab that cake at the end of the night. And first, you're going to need an airtight plastic storage container. I have linked to a very simple cake saver that I found on Amazon. Although, of course, you do not need a specialty cake saver. You can use any kind of airtight Tupperware that you already have on hand. You'll want to wrap the cake in a layer of plastic wrap, again with a layer of foil, and then store it all inside that airtight container in your freezer. And following those steps is going to result in a perfectly like brand new cake one year from your wedding date. And then before we move on, just a critical reminder, put this in your to-do list and on your day of timeline very, very important to designate someone who's going to be in charge of making sure that that top layer gets taken home from the venue. This is an incredibly easy item to forget, and it would be heartbreaking to have that top layer accidentally just tossed or thrown away or left at the venue or even cut and served to your guests on accident. 
Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. Susan has been in the travel business for 27 years and she personally travels to her recommended destinations all the time. So she has firsthand on the ground experience with all the amazing resorts, excursions, and services that she recommends. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a -a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com And be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. Okay, here we are in the second half of today's show, and we're going to shift the focus away from that beautiful multi-tiered wedding cake, and we're going to talk about some cake alternatives and some creative spins that you can incorporate into your dessert spread. Now, these ideas can extend way beyond your actual wedding reception itself. They are totally appropriate for a wedding shower or bridal shower for your rehearsal dinner, or for any other pre-wedding events where you want to offer your guests something sweet, either after or maybe even in place of a main meal. So to start with here, a very common feeling, cake isn't our favorite and it's definitely not a top priority for either of us, but we do want to offer our guests the option. What's the best way for us to keep cake as simple and affordable as possible? A really popular money-saving budget trick with cake is to order a really simple cake for display and then to go for the volume with sheet cakes that are going to be cut behind the scenes and served to all of your guests. Now, if you're looking to literally keep this as cheap as possible, as the listener was who submitted this question, then one of my favorite things on earth get ready for this, is sheet cake from Costco. If you have never been to a kid's birthday party where they are serving a sheet cake from Costco, then you are missing out big time. So my favorite is the white cake with white buttercream icing and then this delicious cream filling. It's absolutely to die for. And the best part is that that sheet cake is gigantic And it costs $20 for 48 servings. That is really, really hard to beat. And this is my absolutely most budget-friendly suggestion for cake. Now, of course, there are a ton of other options that don't involve Costco. But this is a hack that is definitely worth exploring if cake is not a big priority to you and you want to keep it as cheap as possible. Now, if you want to keep it super affordable, but you do want to stick with an actual bakery, then go ahead and ask any potential bakeries to quote you for a really simple display cake and then for sheet cakes that would make up for the rest of the servings, depending on how many guests you have. Next up, how many options should we offer on a dessert bar? Oh boy, I think this is purely up to personal preference and I would definitely make a visit to Pinterest to get some visual inspiration and you can be looking specifically for display ideas, for variety, 
for different color options and kind of start there. You could go as simple as serving a cake and some pies, or you could go really all out with various cookies, candies, cupcakes, donuts. The sky is literally the limit here, and there is absolutely no right or wrong answer in terms of how many options you, quote, should have available. And I'm also going to throw this in here. A dessert bar is a really fun opportunity to showcase your personal favorites, and that can include oftentimes family recipes. So don't hesitate to reach out to your siblings, your aunts and uncles, your cousins, your grandparents. If your loved ones are looking for a really meaningful way to contribute or to help out with your celebration, then baking a couple dozen famous family recipe cookies or that famous key lime pie, that's a really, really meaningful way for them to help and to be a part of it. And then, of course, to point out the obvious, if you can recruit a handful of loved ones to help you provide a really fun spread of desserts, then you're also off the hook paying a fancy bakery to do it for you. And then right in line with that topic is a listener who wonders, what are some fun and creative cake alternatives that we could offer on our dessert bar? And you're in luck because there are a ton of great alternatives if you want to skip the cake altogether, or of course, just offer a variety of options in addition to cake. Here are some ideas for what you could include on your dessert bar. And these are taken from a really fun article on brides.com that's titled 30 Delicious Alternatives to the Classic Wedding Cake. And of course, I'll link to that in the blog post for today's show. You can find that at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cake. And I'll run through a few of these, not all of them, but first off, we have our good old traditional cupcakes. And cupcakes are nice because they're small, they're individually packaged, so there's really no cutting and serving involved here. And they can be super personalized in terms of flavor and colors, which I love. You could also include beautiful cookies, macarons, donuts, your favorite candies with a cute takeaway bag or a container. And any kind of takeaway bag doubles as a really fun and simple guest favor. So something that your guests can take with them to remember your day by. And then some other ideas quickly here, cake pops, miniature bunt cakes are so cute. Mini dessert parfaits are fun. Again, same thing there. You're not needing to serve anything because they're already individually packaged. And then churros are a really fun one. I'm not going to go through all 30 of them here, but visit that blog post if you want to take a look at some more. And then as we start to wrap up here, our last uh, topic slash question for today's cake and dessert show We are suckers for a traditional ice cream stand. What are some ways to recreate this experience for our guests? In my book, you can't talk about dessert without talking about ice cream. So this one really rang true to me. And for a little bit of background and clarification, this specific question came from a listener who was brainstorming how to be able to serve soft serve ice cream, milkshakes, and sundaes at their upscale lakeside reception. This is an amazing idea for a casual summer reception celebration. And here are two really important ideas from me to consider if you're thinking of doing ice cream as a part of your dessert option. My first piece of advice Ice cream is not going to be an attainable do-it-yourself situation. You're really going to need professional mobile freezer equipment to pull this off. So take that for what it's worth. I would not place a ton of time and effort into trying to have an ice cream spread that's something you're going to provide on your own. I think that's really challenging and there are probably some other do-it-yourself projects that you could turn your attention to that would be much uh, easier to execute. And then my second piece of advice here, I'll share two events that I was recently at 
that pulled off ice cream service and they were a birthday party. It was a great party down on the water and they actually hired an ice cream truck to park and just hand out treats as the guests went up to the window and asked for whatever they wanted. So of course, this is not the same as your classic summer ice cream stand with slushies and shakes and mixers, but it was still a really, really fun novelty and a really unique twist that I don't see a whole lot of. And then the second really great event where ice cream was incorporated was actually a wedding. And the couple hired a local ice cream cookie sandwich vendor to come on site and they scooped ice cream in your choice of flavors. And then they sandwiched the scoop between two cookies, which you also got to customize with whatever flavor you wanted that they were offering. Both of these little variations on serving ice cream were super unique and they just really gave off a summer vibe that was super fun. And again, you don't always see ice cream served at events like that. So it's a really memorable way to treat your guests. Okay, and with that, we are going to wrap it up for today. I hope you loved our conversation on all things cake and desserts. And be sure to head to that blog post I put together for you to get a full recap and all of the links that I shared with you in today's show. And then of course, last but not least, if you are loving the Wedding Planning Podcast and you could take just 30 seconds to leave a five-star rating and review wherever you're listening, it would really mean a lot to me. This is hands down the easiest way for the show to reach more couples. Have an amazing week and I will be back next week, same time, same place.